wonder if you ever thought about which one is a better rifle. One of the best European rifle muskets, the Lorenz, or one of the best American rifle muskets, the Springfield or Bridesburg. Well, I tested both guns accuracy on 50 and 100 meter, and I have to say that they are both capable of beautiful group sizes. They are accurate, they are equivalent in this case. There are some benefits on the Lorenz rifle and some benefits on the rifle musket, the American rifle musket, but no big difference. But there is something that in the, back in the 19th century nobody examined, and it is the Von Ballistics. So today I'm going to test these guns in ballistic gelatin. I'm going to check what these bullets do simulating a 100 meter impact. Here are the two rifles that we are going to test today. The first one will be an 1854 Lorenz Jägerstützen and the second one is a Breisberg rifle musket straight from the American Civil War. Both are in mint condition. The Breisberg was manufactured in 1864 while the Lorenz Jägerstützen was manufactured in 1855. The Breisberg has a traditional folding site, while the Jägerstützen has a curved Bogen Vizier. I promised to you in one of my previous videos that I'm going to make the accuracy test of the Breisberg rifle musket as well. Now it is time to fulfill that promise. Let's do some 50 meter accuracy test with the Bridesburg rifle musket. I shot five shots with the Bridesburg rifle musket. You can see three here, nearly in the same hole, and two here. It's a really nice group size at 50 yard. The distance of the gelatin blocks and the chronograph from the muzzle is about five to six meters only, but we are going to set the speed of the bullets to simulate the distance of 100 meter, that's about 110 yards. I put some cloth on the front of the gelatin blocks to simulate the clothing of the soldier. The bullets for today. The first one, the bullet of the Breisberg, it's a Lyman 575213 bullet. The weight is 510 grains. And this is the bullet of the Lorenz rifle. As you can see, it's paper patched. It is uh, 20, 28 grams in weight, so it's a lighter bullet. And as you can see, it has the paper patching. And the paper, on the paper patching, I applied some grease from beeswax and tallow. So the 510 grains weighing, weighing bullet of the Bridesburg rifle musket starts with 290 meter per second muzzle velocity and it retains 260 of its speed at 100 meter. So this is that we are going to have to simulate. <laughs> to simulate the 100 meter impact of the bullet of the Bridesburg musket, I had to set the powder charge to 32 grains of CF Swiss. With this charge, I made 262 meter per second. That should be good for this project. So, let's see what does the Bridesburg bullet do to this gelatin block, simulating the 100 meter impact. This is the place where it entered the gelatin. As you can see, it took some material of the cloth into the wound. And you can also see the dirt here. And 
the bullet didn't leave the gelatin block but you can see it here so it did, made, a big, made a slight turn in the gelatin and uh, to tell you the truth this is the third gelatin block that I use for this bullet because all of the bullets turned to the left just like this and some of them also exited the gelatin block so it was not, not easy to make a comparison with the Lorenz bullet if I, if I lost the bullet so but luckily this block is okay because we have the bullet inside the block the maximum velocity of the lighter and smaller Lorenz bullet is 375 so it's much higher than the Springfield Rifle Muscat's bullet speed and it still keeps 310 meter per second limit 100 meter from its speed I needed 39 grains of 3F Swiss powder to simulate the 100 meter impact of the Lorenz bullet so let's see what it does to the gelatin block You can see the entrance of the bullet here. As you can see, it also took some material into the wound. And if I pull it out, you can see that also the dirt the bullet brings into the wound, and that also the, some pieces of the material are missing. This is where the bullet entered the gelatin. See, it did not leave the block. Here you can see the path of the Lorenz bullet. It stopped in the gelatin block at 44 45 centimeters. The velocity at the impact was 310 meter per second, and the energy at the impact was. 1,300 joules. You see that the bullet stopped 90 degrees turned downwards and here also you can see some remains of the paper patching material and all along the wound you can see dirt that the bullet took in. These are dirt from the residue of the black powder and also some particles of the of the cloth both can cause serious infections without the use of a good fertilizer we can see two kinds of damage on the gelatin block the first one is the straight cavity that the bullet cut all along its path and the second one is this wave that is following the central cavity and this is shows, showing us the damage of the surrounding tissue okay so on the right you can see the original bullet and on the left you can see the bullet that we extracted from the gelatin and you can see how the Lorentz compression type bullet works it compresses so it's losing some length while it's expanding into the rifling. You can see the sign of the rifling on the bullet and you can also see that the, that the edge of the bullet, the nose of the bullet, is flattened thanks to the impact. The original diameter of the bullet was 13.71 millimeters while after the extraction was upset in the rifling to 13.96. The path of the Lorenz bullet was completely straight in vertical and horizontal as well. I'm showing it to you because it will be important. It will be an important difference compared to the Springfield bullet. The path of the 58 caliber Minier 
was not so straight as the Lawrence bullet. As you can see, the bullet stopped here, very close to the side of the gelatin block. And in fact, this block was the third that I had to use because I wasted two before that. Because the bullets, at the, exactly the same spot, the bullets left the gelatin block to the side. So it seems that the, that the mini in this media is uh, turning to the left a bit. I made the first cut of the gelatin block of the Bryceburg Rifle Musket. As you can see the path of the 58 caliber Mini A. It's curved and the Mini A stopped here. Here is the path of the Mini A. As you can see here it also took many dirt and bacteria into the wound. And it traveled quite straight to this point and this is where it stopped. You can see the deformity of the skirt and also the edge. The total distance it traveled in the gelatin was around 36-37 centimeters and you can see that uh, the wave the wave of the of the damage on the surrounding tissue is much shorter than in the Lorenz than with the Lorenz bullet. So here is the comparison of the two bullets. This one is the Lorenz bullet, this one is the 58 caliber mini. You can see clearly the difference. The Lorenz bullet has a deeper penetration and also the the wave that's showing us the the damage on the surrounding tissue it's much longer you can see that the wave lasts until the last five six centimeters of the total path while with the Springfield bullet this is only let's say 20 centimeters long and after that the bullet is traveling another 15 to 16 centimeters without making any damage to the surrounding tissue You can also see some important difference here. On the left you can see the gelatin block of the Springfield. This one is the warrant. As you can see, the bullet of the Springfield rifle musket is losing its stability inside the gelatin. So it made a slight, slight curve. You can see the original 58 caliber rifle musket bullet to the left and the deformed one to the right. As you can see that this bullet also lost some of its length but the deformity is much less than with the Lorenz bullet. The size of the original rifle musket bullet was 580-581 and the one removed from the gelatin Expand it to 589, 589, 585. Unfortunately, I cannot measure the size of the skirt as it is deformed too much. The best way to analyze the result of the experiment is to make a sectional cut from the gelatin, put a strong light behind it, take a picture of it, and then redraw the picture in Photoshop. With a picture like this you can clearly see the difference between the two paths, between the two cavities. You can see the cavity of the Springfield bullet above. You can see that at 22 centimeters the wave showing the damage to the surrounding tissue stops, while with the Jägerstützen bullet, the Lorenz bullet, this wave is about 27-28 centimeters long. You can also see the difference between the end of the two path, the two cavities, the 58, 58 caliber mini A made only a uh, very thin cutting in the gelatin, while the Lorenz bullet, as it turned downward 90 degrees, it made a very strong cut. There is not much difference between the two rifles at 100 meter. They are both accurate and they both can take away the life of the enemy soldier easily. 
What is the difference? It is in the numbers. The Lorenz rifle has a higher muzzle velocity, a lighter bullet, and therefore a, tra a flatter trajectory. The bullet's penetration into the ballistic gelatin was much better. It was around 44 centimeters with the Lorenz, while for the Springfield rifle musket it was only 35, 36. So that's a great difference. Both bullets take in the same amount of infecting material, like bacteria, into the wound. So this is also the same. However, the Lorenz bullet is using the energy from the black powder much better. Both cartridges, cartridges are loaded with the same amount of black powder, 60 grains. So the Lorenz is achieving a higher velocity with this load than the Springfield rifle musket. So which rifle is better? Well, I cannot tell you that, but they both make beautiful sporting guns today.